Hi, thanks so much for joining us today at Canaan's Church Online. We are so happy to have you here. We hope you're having a great week and that your fall is getting off to a good start. We are in our Love Dates and Heartbreak series with our lead pastor, Andrew Powell. We are in week four. If you have missed any of the previous weeks, just hop online and find the weeks that you're missing and get caught up. It's been such a great series and we are so happy to have you with us today. Feel free to stick around after today's message to hear some songs from the North Point Band. We hope you have a great week. Enjoy the show. Welcome to part four of Love, Dates, and Heartbreaks. Uh, this series has been incredibly personal for me. Um, the My marriage relationship is one of my favorite aspects of life. And I think that I always need to be working on this and, and trying to grow in a better direction, a healthy direction. And I hope that through this series, through this conversation, that you're able to do the same. Whether you're in the marriage relationship right now, you're preparing for it, or even if you're not in a marriage relationship, not looking for that, it can still be implemented in all of your relationships that you have because ultimately, like the bottom, bottom, bottom line is we're just trying to become more like Jesus. We're trying to follow him and that looks like something and it should look like something in the most important relationships that we have in life. Now, part of the tension for me is the seat that I sit in as a pastor is that I, I try to help people out and move in a good direction, but then I, I do this thing where I'm stuck without controlling someone else's life, because, I don't know, do you have control of other people? I don't think any of us do, but uh, we're stuck watching, watching people make relationship decisions that undermine their relationships, right? We, we see this from a distance, and sometimes we try to call out ahead of time, like, don't go around that corner, don't do that, and then they do that anyway. And you're like, oh, there's pain there's pain down the road now. You just chose, you made a decision that's going to cause pain later on. You're actually stealing from the relationship or you're hurting the relationship itself. And that's kind of painful actually to watch from a distance. Now, the last couple of weeks, we've actually talked about specifically love. Um, that we, we talked about that Jesus, his command that he gave us is to love others the way that he loved us. But then Paul kind of unpa unpacks that, the Apostle Paul, he unpacks that in one of his letters, uh, and we went through what actually love looks like, how we can implement it in our own relationships and in our own life. And here's, here's the list of what love looks like. Love is patient. Love is kind. It's not jealous. It's not arrogant. Love is honoring, selfless. It's not easily angered. It's not a scorekeeper. Love is protecting, trusting, hopeful. And persevering. Now, now that we got a check mark beside all those, right? We got that squared away. <laughs> no, th that's a direction that we move in, right? This is a direction. You're never going to be perfect at this. There's always a way forward. There's always steps that you can take to further on. So, but uh, today and the next week, we're going to be pivoting a little bit and actually start looking at the dating relationship. Now, I know that some of us that maybe you're you're married already. Well, you're still dating your spouse. You hear that around churches sometimes. You're still in that relationship. We should be honoring our spouse uh, in this way. But especially if you haven't gotten to that relationship yet, or, or you're in the dating world at this point, these next couple weeks are going to be absolutely important for you to pay attention to, listen to, and lock in on what we're trying to say. If you look around the world and you see, you know, especially if you're in the dating scene right now, and you see what's going on and you recognize, I don't really want to be involved <laughs> with what's going on around there. There's a principle that I want you to be able to, I'm going to give you the bottom line for today right up front. There, there's a principle that we're going to talk about. And it's simply this. If you don't want a relationship like the majority of relationships, 
don't date like the majority of daters, right? If you don't want a relationship like everybody else's relationship, the relationships that you look at and think, ooh, I hope it's better than that for me. I, I don't want that part in my relationship. If that's what you see, then you can't date and you can't live and you can't act the same way that everybody else does. Because if you're going to do the same, you know, input the same things into the relationship, you're going to get the same results as everybody else. We have to change this. We have to do this a little bit different. Paul actually introduced this, uh, this idea, this concept to us last week when we talked about this in a letter. He said, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put the ways of childhood behind me. You see, dating is not for children. Dating is not for someone that's not ready yet. Dating is for someone that's moving in the direction of, of this most important relationship. And, and so this is an adult aspect of life. It's not a childish aspect of life. But unfortunately, our society, our world, we revert back to childish ways when it comes to our relationships. We don't say that dating is childish, right? We would never say that. We, we say it a different way. <laughs> we say that dating is complicated. It's so complicated. We don't say childish, but that's kind of what we mean. And dating is absolutely, today dating is absolutely complicated. And I can't speak from personal experience, really. I mean, it has been... Uh, 16 years since I married Amy. I've been out of the dating world for co quite some time. And even before then, I wasn't really all the way in. I, you know, I dated two people in my entire life and one of them I married. So I guess that's like a 50% success rate. I don't know if that's good or bad, whatever. That's, that's my stats. Uh, but I, I decided to actually do some research and look at some perspective uh, of what people are experiencing right now in the dating world, and maybe for you, you know, maybe you've been out of the dating world also, but you have kids that are approaching that, or you have students that are in the midst of it, or you know someone that's there. Maybe you are squarely in the middle of the dating scene right now, and this is going to hit, <laughs> this is going to hit home for you. You're going to, you're going to identify with this. So these are some of the quotes that I found out, just people that are talking about what it's like to be in the dating world right now. Start off with this one. Online dating is the worst each time I ask friends, ranging from early 20s to their 40s, how the temperature in the dating pool is, I'm met with borderline hostility. For all of the talk of ease that a dating app allows for a potential date, the impression I'm left with is swimming in a pool they all took a dump in. Sorry if that's a little grotesque. Sometimes the dating world is. <laughs> Instead of shocking the water, it gets worse. Instead of shocking the water and getting out, everyone decided they need to keep swimming in the sewage, perhaps even adding to it, because that pool is where people swim. That's what Benjamin says about the dating world. There's more. Don't worry. If that wasn't bad enough for you, there's more. Uh, this is from Shani. She said, I saw a meme once that read, it used to be how long do we date before we have sex? Now it's how long do we have sex before we date? That is a different culture. That's a different world than some of us actually experienced when we were in that moment, in that season of life. Another quote here. We don't communicate our feelings to one another, but instead play this guessing game with no intention of being with that person. Because it means you care and you're weak. Because whoever cares the least wins, right? Whoever cares the least wins. Is that the mentality that you're carrying that you that you are working on in your relationships right now? That is that is detrimental, right? We're talking about watching from a distance the aspects and the decisions, the choices that we're making, even the mindset that we're keeping in the midst of our relationships that's undermining the relationship as a whole. Here's another here's another quote. I'm definitely as much to blame as any of the men I meet. I'm often unwilling to make the space in my life a relationship needs in order to thrive. Maybe this will all change when I meet the right man. That's what Rebecca says. You know what all that sounds like? All that sounds like dating is incredibly complicated. It is difficult. It is painful. It is hard. 
And if you're in the midst of that right now, I'll be honest, I don't envy you. I love my marriage. I love where I'm at right now. I don't want to go backwards. But in order for you to move forward to get to that ultimate relationship, I hope that this conversation that we're having right now, I hope that it helps you take some steps forward. We don't want to act like children when it comes to our relationships. We don't want to revert back to childish ways like the rest of the world does. Because this is, this is what children, and this is how children act. They're impatient. They're self-seeking. They're self-centered. They're selfish. They're easily angered, easily distracted. They're ill-mannered and rude. Does that, does that describe any relationships that you've been a part of? Does that hit home? Maybe even right now you're like, oof. Some of those words are the exact words that I described recently. It's painful. It's difficult. And again, it is complicated. You know, another thing about children, they want to be held until they don't. <laughs> they pout when they don't get their way. This should not be how we describe our relationships. And yet this is the pitfall. This is where so many folks, so many young folks, so many people that are in the dating world right now, this is where they land. This is where maybe you land. And I'm hoping that throughout this conversation, I'm hoping that throughout this talk that we're able to actually put the, the ways of childhood behind me. That's the way that Paul described it. Put the ways of childhood behind me. Because right now it's, it's complicated. And this way of, of navigating relationships that the world, that society hands us, that, that movies and, and TV shows and these things that we are watching and consuming, the way that they tell us that the reality of the world is, it makes it, it, makes it complicated. It makes us susceptible to the right person myth. Right? We think that once we meet the right person, that we're actually going to change magically and become a different person, that we're going to function differently, or that we're going to be a better person than we currently are. All those habits, all that past, all that baggage that we've been carrying around from, from relationship to relationship, once we meet the right person, we get to drop that baggage, that luggage, and we can just move on from it. But that's not the reality that we live in. Now, the, there is no magical right person to erase our history and our past which is why we have to start to prepare right now. But so many of us, when we move into that relationship, when we move towards that relationship, when we finally meet someone that's worth finding, we're unprepared, which is why right now we have to start to prepare. We have to start to work to become the type of person that we want to, that we desire to become. And ultimately, our perspective on dating. Dating is not the big show, right? Dating is not the end result. No, no, no. Dating is exercise and preparation. It's a step in the direction, but it's not the end result. It is not the last location. It's not the, the final destination. It's not the big show. It's just a step in that direction. We should be exercising. We should be preparing for that future relationship. And maybe it's with the person that you're dating right now, but maybe it's a different person than the person you're dating right now is. And you can actually do work. You can actually prepare yourself for that future relationship in your current relationship. But we do that by protecting each other. We do that by protecting ourselves. We do that with intention and with hard work. It requires something of us. When we decide to move into this mentality, that, that dating is preparation, that dating is exercise, it absolutely requires something of us, something of you. And it's not easy. It is risky. It is difficult. Because in a relationship, in an honest, genuine, heartfelt, full relationship, you get vulnerable. You have to open up. You have to actually look at the areas of weakness that you have. If you want to move forward, if you want to improve, if you want to grow, you actually have to look at the weaknesses that you have in your life. You, you have to. You have to look at where you need growth. And that's part of this. So we have to, in, in the relationships we had, in order to prepare for the future relationships that we might have, that we want to have, that we might want to desire, it's this. We have to exercise your courage muscle. You exercise your self-control muscle, the honor muscle, the plan and prepare muscle. That's what we have to do. That's what dating is about. That's, it's exercise. It is work. 
but it moves us in the direction. We grow stronger in this, in this aspect of, of relationships. So uh, the rest of today, I'm going to talk about some things. And, and again, this is not a, thus saith the Lord. It's probably more a little bit more like thus saith me and Andy Stanley a little bit too. Uh, <laughs> this is just perspective. This is just some experience that we've gained that, that I would like to share with you that hopefully can allow you to navigate around some pitfalls without falling in them. Now, I'm going to start off real quick before we even get to the rules that I'm going to introduce. Before we get to the rules, let, let me just speak to the women real quick, S- specifically to the women about men. And this is not, I'm not trying to make an excuse. I'm not trying to, whatever. If we don't have to, speaking of men, we won't. If you step in into a place that we should be functioning in as, then we will step out and step back. If we don't have to, we won't. And there's plenty of other areas of life, life that we, we step into with our full selves, with confidence, with strength, with boldness, with courage. And then all of a sudden we move in the direction towards a relationship and we go silent. Right? We step back. We shrink back. We all of a sudden don't know where we should move in the relationship and what the next step is. And, and we're happy to just float along and let you decide where we're supposed to go and let you be in charge of the whole thing. If, if we don't have to, we won't. And I'm not trying to make an excuse. I'm just sharing a little bit of insight from the male perspective and the male psyche as far as what we typically are like, stereoty- stereotypically. So now, now that I've said that, again, that's not an excuse. It's just you know, a mindset that you need to be aware of. We're going to move into the five rules for dating. The five rules for dating. And the first, first rule is specifically for the guys. Guys, ask girls on dates. Ask a girl on an actual date. Say the word date when you want to ask her out. So you should say, I would like to take you out on a date too, and then be specific. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Ask a girl specifically out on a date. Don't say, want to hang out? You, you, do you want to do something sometime? Maybe be specific when you're specific, when you bring that clarity muscle with you, that's honoring to the girl, right? So guys, you need to ask girls out on an actual date. So maybe here's an example. If you, you know, there's a girl that you want to ask out on a date, say, hey, I've been thinking about going to Palouse Falls. I would love for you to come with me on a date and we can go hiking and we can have lunch. Not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. Would you, would you, enjoy, uh, would you be able to do that with me? Would you like to do that with me? Uh, and then give her some space and some time to check her calendar. Because here's the reality. You've actually been thinking about this for a while. You've had weeks or maybe even a month or more than that to think about it and worry about it. When you make the request, when you ask, then you offer her the same opportunity to think and worry about it. You've actually had friends praying for you because you, they knew that, that you were going to ask her out on a date today at this time. You're like, oh, they're praying for me right now. She didn't have that privilege, right? Give her the privilege where she can think about it, worry about it, and maybe have her friends pray about her response to you. Also, just a heads up, if you're going to ask someone to go somewhere a ways away from civilization and go on a hike, I would suggest that it be someone that you know and are familiar with because otherwise it it just feels a little kidnappy if, if you're like, hey, someone I don't know, would you like to go out in the middle of nowhere with me? Don't do that. Don't. That's probably not a first good date. Uh, anyway, let's continue to move on. Ladies, uh, the next rule is all for you. Ladies, you need to agree to dates. Don't agree to just hang out. Don't, don't agree just to do something sometime. Right? You need to agree to the actual date that he's asking you to. Or don't agree. I mean, if you don't, I'm not saying that you have to agree every single time uh, to whoever might ask you out on a date. No, but if he's going to ask you on a date, make sure that it's a date that he's asking you out on, not just a hangout time, right? And and don't do this either. Where he approaches, he's like, hey, uh, you know, I think you're really cute. I don't know, pick up line. Do you want to hang out sometime? Okay, instead of saying yes, your response should be, well, what would you like to do? Be specific. Because here's the reality. The bar is set on the first encounter. From now on, 
right? From now on, the bar is set, the standard is set. That becomes the expectation for every time that you guys, if you continue, you know, if, if the first date goes well, and you continue to date each other, that's going to be the standard that he brings with him into every single encounter. So if you lower the standard for that first one, you've lowered the standard for the entire relationship itself. Now, uh, you need to be specific or make sure that he is specific. So if he comes up, he's like, hey, you want to do something sometime? But you want to give him a chance. Like, that wasn't, you didn't ask me out on a date, but I kind of like you. I, I think you can do this. I think you have the potential. You can respond like this. Do you have something specific in mind? And just a heads up, he won't, right? <laughs> he's not going to because he didn't ask you something specific. And guys, you're like, wait, that means I have to think about this? I have to process this? I have to, I have to come in prepared? Exactly. Absolutely. You do. She's worth it. And that's how you honor her. And if, <laughs> if you get to the point where he doesn't ask you something specific, hey, you want to hang out somewhere sometime, do something, and, <laughs> and then you make the suggestion, you know, sure, I would love to. Do you want to grab some coffee sometime? And then he responds, yeah, when would you like to do that? And then you give the answer. You've just asked him out. Make sure that he is asking you out. Make sure he is asking you out. And here's the problem. And I, I know this is a tension. I know this is a tension. Because there's a fear of missing out on opportunities. There's a fear of missing out on what could be within this relationship. And your hope is that you want to make sure that you don't miss out on this opportunity, that this could be a good guy. This could be the right guy. This could be, right, this could be someone that actually matches or meets your, your standards, your expectations. But if you're too worried about what you will miss, that you sacrifice who you are and, and you adjust yourself to them, first of all, you're not holding the guy up to the, to the standard that he needs to be. That's my whole challenge is that men need to be, that young men need to be adult men, right? We need to move in the direction of being an adult, not childish ways. We need to stand up and be adults. And women, you need to respect yourselves ultimately. Don't lessen yourself because, and, and there's a song that says this so well. Kelsey says this in the song, uh, Miss Me More is the song title. And essentially, you'll miss you more. If you sacrifice yourself and pieces of yourself in order to hope hopefully attain this relationship, hopefully move into this relationship with that guy, that you'll actually miss yourself more than you would have missed the relationship as a whole. Don't sacrifice yourself. You, you're worth it. You are worth it. God created, created you on purpose for a purpose. And that was not to lessen yourself or devalue yourself in order to hopefully get into this relationship. No. You're better than that. You're worth more than that. Now, uh, the next rule, rule number three, this for this for everybody. Don't ever mistreat anyone, even if they don't seem to mind being mistreated. And we bump up against this, where we, we have a certain set of uh, standards, but the other person's fully okay with a lesser version of that. Don't mistreat someone. If you think it's mistreating them, if you think it's not honoring them, if you think it's not respectful, then don't do it even if they're okay with it. And that's difficult. That takes discipline. Well, she said she was okay with it. That doesn't mean that you should be okay with it. Right? That means there needs to be multiple conversations and a decision that if I'm not comfortable with that being the, the level of respect that I have for someone, then I should not be doing that, even if she is okay with it, even if he is okay with it. So don't mistreat anyone. If you think it's mistreating them, don't mistreat them, even if they're okay with it. Now, um, something that I think is incredibly difficult, um, and, and it's something that we all kind of work through in relationships, and, and this is just being fully honest. We think that we're trying to save someone from pain by not telling them the full truth. We just try to hide the truth. We lessen the truth. We, we skirt around how we actually feel or how we're actually thinking. But the reality is that the truth hurts less than betrayal. The truth hurts less than betrayal. 
in those conversations, right? When you're trying to, I just don't want him to feel bad. I don't want her to have hurt feelings. I don't want to deal with the tears. You know what? You, you can cause some tears now or you can cause a lot of tears later. Don't be afraid of tears. Make sure that you're speaking the truth, that you are sharing the truth of the matter rather than trying to avoid it. Because it is okay to hurt someone's feelings. Absolutely. In relationships, here's what I can promise you. You will hurt each other's feelings. This happens. If you're in a relationship for an extended period of time, you're going to hurt her feelings. She's going to hurt your feelings. That's the way it's going to be. It is not okay to avoid hurting someone's feelings to protect yourself from the discomfort of telling someone the truth. Right? Because that's actually demeaning to the other person. I don't know if you can handle it. I just don't want to deal with I just don't want to deal with your pain that this might cause you. You're actually being selfish in that moment rather than being authentic and genuine. You, you, you pretend that you're caring because you're trying to keep her or him from being hurt, but in the long run, you are ending up hurting them even worse, especially when you're just protecting yourself. Let's be honest. That's the majority of the time. That's what's actually happening, that we are protecting ourselves in those moments. Now, uh, let's move on to the fourth, the fourth rule. Don't allow yourself to be mistreated. So we just said that we shouldn't meet, mistreat anyone else. We should also not allow other people to mistreat us. You're worth it. We've talked about this before on a regular basis, that God created you, and that the worth of something is the price that it will bring. And the price that was paid for you, the, the price that you were bought with, was Jesus' life. He sacrificed himself for you to have an opportunity to have a relationship with a loving Heavenly Father. If that's the price that you brought, don't devalue yourself that way. Don't allow someone to mistreat you because you are worth it. You have value and you have inherent worth. Don't let someone else tell you otherwise. Now, the, the fifth and final rule that we're going to talk about right now is don't do anything that makes you a liar for life. Don't do anything that makes you a liar for life. This means that when you're moving forward, right, we have this one season right now where you're dating and you're in relationships and you're in this, you know, you're in the current of the dating scene right now. You just get in and all of a sudden it's moving you in a direction. Some of those things that you will experience, if you are out of control, if you're not deciding intentionally what is part and what is not part of your dating experience, eventually someone's going to ask you your story. And it may be your future spouse. It may be your kids. They're going to ask you your story. Write a story with your current experience that you will want to share, not one that you will be tempted to lie about. Right? Because if you think about it, this is, this is what absolutely is part of the normal, natural dating scene in our world today. Binge dating, hookups, lying your way in, Lying your way out. Pregnancy tests. Can't remember exactly. Guilt, shame, heartbreak. Stories that you hope no one asks you to tell. Right? The, these are not stories that we hope people ask us about. If that's part of your story. We hope that those things don't get brought up. And we try to move ahead and, and predetermine the story, how we can navigate that and still be mostly truthful. Choose right now. Choose right now to make sure that you don't set yourself up to be a liar for life. I, I don't know if I can say it any more simply than this. Choose better. Ch choose better for you. Choose better for your future spouse, whether you're dating them right now or whether you haven't even met them yet. Choose better for your kids and your grandkids that you're setting the tone for the legacy of your family tree moving forward. This is an opportunity for you to be so incredibly intentional with this aspect of life. I, I don't know how else to say it, so I'm just going to go back to the, to the very first thing that I told you, the bottom line that I shared right up front. If you look around the world today, right? If you look around and if you don't want a relationship like the majority of relationships that you see, 
and you just look and you're like, nope, not that one, not that one, don't want that, don't want that. If you're looking around and you see relationships that you don't want to be a part of, right? You don't want a relationship like the majority of relationships. Don't date like the majority of daters. If you don't want the outcome, then don't have the same input. If you don't want the same output, don't have the same input, right? This is something that is, I'm just telling you, it's future pain that we're talking about. Or it's something that you are excited to share, that you get, it, get to tell your spouse, you get to tell your children, this is the temptation that I was faced with. This is, this, this is the season of life I was in. And instead, I decided. I moved in a different direction because you were worth it. Because I thought ahead to you. And that's what I hope this does for you. That you don't think about this moment right now, these five minutes today. No, no, no. You are thinking ahead of time to what lies ahead. Please, 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 please. You are worth it. Choose better. Make the decision to write a story with your relationships, your dating season of life that you want to tell, that you want to share. Now let me pray and we will close out today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you do for us. God, you are a good God. And so often we take opportunities that, that walk by in front of us and we, we make a poor choice or a season of poor choices. God, I pray that you would allow us to see with clarity right now that our choices today, our decisions today have an effect tomorrow on our future relationships, on our future family. And God, that we have the power, we have the ability to choose today to write the story that we want to tell. God, I pray that you would help us, that you would help us navigate through relationships to make sure that we are preparing for those future relationships that we would protect what's most important, most important to you, most important to us. God, we love you. We thank you for everything that you do for us. And I pray that you would help us to choose the, the courage, the courageous and the bold choices today in order to have the results and the rewards tomorrow when it comes to our relationships. In your name I pray, amen. <laughs> This world with love and made my fight your own. I lift my eyes and throw fear aside and sink out into the night. Cause even when the world caves, even when the fight calls, even when the wars wage, I'll take all. I know you are greater, forever you are Savior. I will sing your praise with all that I am, with all that I am, Lord. I'll stand down the waves, cause you own the tide. I'll steal my soul. Sing your praise with all that I am, with all that I am alone, with all
pray in the fight and watch it turn. Jesus, my life, I give it all to you. Yeah. I won't let the storm weather my heart. Won't let the darkness beat me down. Sing in the night, my hope alive in you. Yeah. I'll walk through the fire and not be burned. Pray in the fight and watch it turn. Jesus, my life, I give When the world pays, even when the fight calls, even when the wars wage, I'll take heart. Oh yes, I will. Greater, forever you are Savior. I will sing your praise with all that I am, with all that I am alone. With all that my life, I give it all to you. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so Your goodness is running after, it's running
I will sing of the goodness of God. God, we love you and we look to you in these times of trials. We've seen you come through before and you will come through again. We know that you are good and faithful, that you are powerful over all the things that we're facing. And so we choose trust today. Would you strengthen us as we make that choice every single day? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you for uh, spending some time with us today. And next week, we're going to continue and pick up uh, right there uh, as we continue on in love, dates, and heartbreak.